Hi, my name is Meredith Branstead. I'm the Principal Landscape Architect with Helix Environmental Planning. And I'm Jesse. I'm the uh, Landscape Architect at Helix Environmental Planning. Uh, and we're here to talk to you today about what we do as landscape architects and some of the cool projects we've worked on. Um, so uh, I guess let's start with what does a landscape architect do? Jesse, how would you describe that? A landscape architect can do a whole wide variety of things. It's a really interesting profession because there are so many niches. So a landscape architect could do it, anything from designing a residential project, like a, somebody's yard, to designing a streetscape or a plaza or planning communities. Uh, but what a landscape architect does not do is maintenance or installation. Typically, a landscape architect only does the design side of a project. So as Jesse said, you can be, um, you have to be licensed to be a landscape architect in California. So it's a, it's actually a profession that is um, regulated by the state. And so you can't actually call yourself a landscape architect unless you have a, a valid license. Um, but you can be a landscape designer and there you can do a lot of smaller projects before you're licensed or without being officially licensed. Uh, so, I guess, Jesse, what would you say maybe is one of your favorite projects or what's some of the stuff you really like to do? I have a lot of things I love doing. I particularly enjoy projects that involve public outreach because I think working with the communities as sort of a design facilitator rather than telling people what the community, what they want, is one of my favorite things and a process I really enjoy because I also like working with people. Uh, there's two projects that stand out to me as projects that I really enjoyed. One of which is within the city of Marysville, we worked on a project called Gavin Park, and this is an existing park that has some grass and an old falling apart play structure with a gravel underneath. And there was a lot of community interest in changing this project to be an upgraded playground experience and involve uh, maybe a baseball or softball field area for the local teams to practice. And so we had five different outreach meetings in the parks, in with the council, with city council, and with the public at large to figure out what exactly they wanted to see. And we ended up with a very, very cool playground that involves sort of it's a treehouse theme so it's amongst the trees with ropes and a zip line and towers underneath it is all bark mulch and also poured in place resilient surfacing to make it accessible for people with different abilities and also to make it feel safer if you fall on it and then the other another project that stood out to me is nicholas dairy this is a historic farmhouse that's used for field trips different events with students and with historic groups. And the farmhouse produces food and is maintained by the students. And it also has a lawn area for field trips and it has some, some historic garden spaces. And it's something where the high school students are actively building portions of it as we go. And so that one is fantastic to highlight all sorts of historical and future urban agriculture techniques. And that I think is something very cool. So um, what would you say a standard day kind of looks like for you? A standard day for me can change a lot. It almost always involves coordination. I'm a project manager is one of it, in my position and so I might be coordinating with project client or with other engineers or consultants working on the project. So for example I might work with an electrical engineer on lighting in a park or I might be working with a civil engineer on a bandstand stage and I also we're a very collaborative team so I spend some time every day coordinating with my team members be it uh, calling about a project we're both working on or getting some input or design thoughts a lot of my time is also spent on my computer doing CAD work uh, my design process will often start on paper with colored pencils but generally it quickly goes into the CAD process and that's where a lot of my design is. And then some days I actually spend all day out on a site, project site in a meeting where I get to walk around and look at what's out there and talk about what the client wants to see. So there's quite a bit of variety in my day to day. Let's see, what kind of, I know you mentioned you use CAD, are you using any other technology at this 
Oh yeah, I use a whole variety of different programs. We use a landscape architecture plugin with AutoCAD called LandFX, which helps take AutoCAD and and add some tools that are helpful specifically for landscape architects. For example, some planting tools and some tools to help with irrigation design. I also use a variety of programs, especially for graphics. So um, Adobe programs mostly, InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop. And I use those for renderings and I also use them for things like posters or flyers for advertising a public outreach meeting. Yeah, and I know one of the ones we've been adding in our office recently is SketchUp. Uh, we also, in addition to a kind of traditional landscape architecture design, we are also doing visual simulations for environmental review of projects. So uh, CEQA, so California Environmental Quality Act, means that they have to go through a whole big documentation. And so as part of that, we're helping out our planning team doing 3D models in SketchUp of like bridges and new road alignments and things like that. And sh and then doing, uh, we, we build the 3D model and then in Photoshop make it look photorealistic so we can see what's this going to look like when the project's done. So that's another big thing that um, we're, we're really starting into. And I just want to chime in because one thing I think is really interesting about the work that we do, these are tools to to help us communicate towards a future project rather than the actual product. I'm not creating design plans, I'm creating a landscape. Design plans are just how I get there. And so I think that's a kind of an interesting distinction to think about. I think that's a really good point. I think uh, another interesting thing to think about, I think as a landscape architect as opposed to maybe uh, other kinds of engineers or architects is that we are having to plan you know, 15 or 20 years into the future, it takes time for trees to grow. And so a lot of our plans, you know, we, we know this is what it's gonna look like initially, but it's really gonna look best in another five years or in 10 years or 15 years. Um, whereas I think many of the other design fields, they get to build it and it looks amazing on day one and they're like, and it's done. Um, and ours is sort of one of those, you have to just, there's this time in, um, built into it. And I think that's one of the things that makes it kind of different from other fields. Any other advice or inspirational words you give if somebody was interested in pursuing landscape architecture, why should they do it and how do they do it? So I think, I mean, I love landscape architecture. If you like the space that's outside of your buildings and have an interest in creating it, then that's a perfect alignment with landscape architecture. Like that, that is what we do. Um, if you want to become a landscape architect, I definitely suggest starting with doing things. Volunteer at your church or at your school to build a raised beds or to build a rain garden. Start designing your yard or your neighbor's yard or a friend's yard or a family member's yard. And if you can, like put some of it in the ground, see what happens. Especially on a small scale project, that's a really great way to start. Draw sketches, redo sketches over and over. Just observe the outside or do an internship or participate in a design competition. I think the thing about landscape architecture is it can be so many things. So the best way to figure out what you like and what you want to do and to get experience doing it is to just start doing something. Don't be worried about it being perfect. Just try things out. I think that's really good advice and I will add that as I have been working for a long time I always almost always learn more when I am trying to do work in my own yard and I realize how does this irrigation really go together like hands-on experience is the fastest way to learn how to actually make things work so let's see uh, I guess I can take on the how do you how do you become a landscape architect so if you watch this video and you're like that sounds pretty cool they seem awesome then where do you go? Uh, so I'd start by going to asla.org. That that's the American Society of Landscape Architects. They have a whole uh, tab on their webpage on how to do it. Um, landscape architects are licensed now in all 50 states, but the requirements to get licensed vary. Most of them do require you to have a degree in landscape architecture or a related field. And there's a list of all the accredited schools on asla.org so you can figure out where are good options to maybe start looking at going to college. 
Um, there are also some states that you can still basically work up through an apprenticeship program and get experience that way. And it just means you'll have to work longer. You can kind of either work for a long time or you can go to school and then work for a shorter time. You can also work in the industry and you don't have to be licensed. I mean, license means that I stamp plans and I can design a plan and give it to a contractor and someone can build it. And my license says I have the minimum requirements to do that, to, to be able to do it. But you can work in the industry for your entire career and never get a license if you don't, if you don't want to be the one who's actually like signing off on the plans and taking responsibility for that. You don't have to ever go that route. You could just get in, work your way up through CAD, designer, graphics, planting, maybe design build, and still be a landscape designer and get to work in this industry um, on, on all of us. So. Yeah, so I worked for years where I did not have my license and I would do designs with direction from Meredith and then she would review everything for health and safety and make sure that the plans were a good set of plans and then she would stamp it. And so you can even work in a traditional landscape architecture firm without being a licensed landscape architect. Uh, all right, and I guess my final kind of inspirational words for anybody would be just, uh, if someone offers you an opportunity and you're not 100% sure it's what you totally want to do, but it's sort of related or something, say yes, just try it. As you move forward into post high school and college or career, whatever you're doing, I mean, somebody's like, oh, hey, can you work this Saturday to do this thing? And you're like, well, it's a new skill. If you get to learn a new skill or try something new out, give it a try, say yes and do it. You either find out you like it or maybe you have a new skill to put on your resume or you find out you hate it and now you know to avoid it. Those are any of those outcomes is really useful. So especially when you're young, say yes to everything you can, all the options you can get. Well, thanks for talking and I hope for everybody who took the time to watch all of this that it was informative and maybe you are more interested in landscape architecture now. Bye.